Hi, I'm Dr. Neil Singer uh, from AC Kinetics in Armonk, New York, and I'll be talking about our use of uh, Wolfram System Modeler and Mathematica in our workflow for designing AC induction motor uh, drive controls. Uh, I'm Neil Singer, and um, I want to give a shout out to Ken Pash, who worked with me on this, but um, I'm going to be talking about using System Modeler and Mathematica to rapidly uh, you know, to rapidly build hardware control systems. So basically, uh, a little background about who is AC Kinetics. So we're an independent engineering firm. Um, we're a group of MIT trained PhD engineers and um, we, um, uh, we have about 25 years of working together and uh, we, we, we started out in machine vibration and control software. So we, we, we've done a lot of licensing over the years uh, in area of vi residual vibration reduction, motorized equipment, no sway cranes where we uh, control cranes that are handling nuclear materials and other um, um, high cost payloads. Uh, we also worked, uh, we're on hundreds of millions of hard disk drives uh, doing the um, acoustics and also the um, um, uh, you know, speeding up drives and we've developed this nonlinear optimization technology and so what we used it is to do on AC induction motors. We said okay, um, uh, you know induction motors are used uh, everywhere through industry and 45% of the world's energy winds up in a, in a motor somewhere. So all the energy produced in the planet winds up, 45% of it winds up in a motor. So we entered into a joint development agreement with Coke Industries and, uh, and these are some of our previous licensees and anyway, so I'm going to go into, jump into how we use System Modeler uh, in our workflow. So first thing we do is we use it as a proof of concept, as a digital twin for our software verification. Uh, and then more recently, we, 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 I'm going to show some equation derivation. So here's a, an example of a prototype drive. Uh, this drive is capable of uh, 700, running, runs at 700 volts and is capable of delivering 900 amps. Okay, we run it at five horse though, which is much smaller. Uh, it's a serious drive. Um, so we, we use System Modeler to verify it. So this is what we do, is if you look here in the center, there um, is our C API. So we check out the API, and now what we can do is we can verify it with System Modeler, make sure it runs, make sure we didn't make any mistakes or, or, or any problems before we run it at 700 volts. Now take that same code, pull it out of the repository, compile it in the hardware in, on, a, on an embedded uh, processor, and it will run. And that's the idea is not a single line of code changes. We run it on the on system modeler and then we turn around and we run it in, uh, in the physical hardware. So to give you an idea, I increase the size of my mouse for the presentation. So this is an example of a model we run in system modeler. This block here is our C code. You know, you can't see it here, but it's, it's our C code and we have an inverter and a motor and we can load it up in various ways. So I'm gonna show, actually show this in, in system modeler. Um, so here's a motor system and our software is running it. Um, and we're, and we're, and we're, I want to do an uh, efficiency map uh, with this. So we, you know, we run these efficiency maps in the real world. So here I've, I've taken the, the, the model and I'm pointing, this is in Mathematica, I point to that model. Um, I say these are the speeds I want to run, these are the loads I want to run. I, I wrote this little function to create a speed load table. So here's a table that was created. And then I export it to a file. And then that file gets read in by System Modeler. And here's, here we run the model. Uh, I can, um, you know, if anyone wants to see how long it takes, it runs at about real time. So it's about 45 seconds, so I'm not gonna spend the time on it. And we pull back the results. So here we, do we just load the results right in from System Modeler right into Mathematica. We can plot them, there's our load profile, there's our efficiency profile. And now what we can do is say, okay, um, hold on. I clicked in the wrong spot. Next slide. Okay, so um, so here we can plot an efficiency map. So I made a little function here that we use the same function we use for plotting our real efficiency maps. This is a digital generator or a, or a system modeler efficiency map. You can see we, we the shape of this, and this is a real one from hardware. So you can see they're pretty similar. If you look at the red curve up here uh, at the top, it looks it has the same shape as one of these, and this is a different motor, so it's not exactly the same. But it's a um, it, you know it just shows that we can prototype even a test that we're about to run. This is a real physical test that we ran. It's a um, um, on a hard, on a hand towel winder by our our uh, 
a partnering company. It's uh, Coke Industries, which is uh, Georgia Pacific. So Georgia Pacific, this, the, this paper roll here that you see looks like a tiny little roll. It's actually six feet in diameter. So it gives you an idea of the scale of things here. Um, and, it, and there's a 60 horse motor that runs it. This is the load and chain, you know, the, the uh, speed change on that machine of the, of the 60 horsepower motor, uh, velocity profile. And in this particular machine, we saved half the energy. Okay, so, so you can see there's some big advantages to doing this. Um, um, and, and part of the workflow was developing this in System Modeler. Like, so could we have been able to do this uh, without developing it? And, and, and I think the answer is no. I think we would needed these tools in order to develop the software and then apply it. So it gave us a great, very, you know, very quick turnaround um, on our models and on our, on our ideas. Uh, another thing, just quick, quick um, show that where, where that where that heat's going, right? Because you're dumping in twice the energy. It's got to go somewhere. Well, it goes into temperature. So there's your temperature, right? It heats up the motor. You're wasting that energy. It warms up the plant. It warms up the motor. Now you got to get rid of the heat and it's, it reduces reliability of your motor. So the, the heat may be one of the biggest advantages of this to, to, to many in, in, in industry because they want to get rid of that heat. So let me um, give you a little bit of another way we use uh, Wolfram Technologies in, the, in, our, in our, um, our work. This is our dynamometer. So I'll give you an overview. We use a Yokogawa power meter. It's a, a state-of-the-art power analyzer. Um, there, here's our motor. It gets controlled by a test drive. We, we, we can command this, the loads and speeds through an arbitrary waveform generator. What we did is, um, and this is kind of cool, we took Wolfram language and we wrote a VXI 11 driver that talks to the instruments. And so now we control this entire experiment. The entire dynamometer is controlled through Wolfram language. So it controls the, the dynamometer, the data collection, the visualization. It's all done there. The data, you know, and, and the advantage of it is you make fewer mistakes, so you throw away less, fewer results, because you know, like if the instrument was set up wrong, oh, you know, have a checklist, you forgot a step, it, you don't have to do that because the the, uh, the, the instrument setup is all done through Mathematica. Um, we uh, we don't lose the data because you once you record the data, you're not putting it on a USB stick. In the old days, we used to use LabVIEW. We'd store it on a USB stick, run it upstairs, plug it into another computer, plot it avoid all that stuff, we, we, we basically just um, grab the data, plot the data, it's all contained and, and the work throws, flows through Mathematica. So, and this is just a summary of, of the things that we can uh, that support. So now, I wanna show you a, a new feature of System Modeler, it's just come out. I'm using a pre-release version, so you won't find this on the shelves, but hey, it should be out soon. It's running version 12 of, of System Modeler. So, um, but it's a really cool feature. I'm gonna show a use of it, a use case. So um, what we can do is quickly create a model in System Modeler, and we can extract the equations of the model, and then we can use those to design a controller, get some insight, and load the controller back into System Modeler. So let's just show an example of this. So here we go, we're gonna connect up. You see we're running version 12. Um, here I, I told it what the model I'm running, which is an elevator model. Now it's a really simple model. So I'm gonna jump over to the elevator model, and here it is, and so basically, I got an input position. A, 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 there's a mass here that goes up and down, and there's a spring and another mass. So it's basically just a spring mass system. I made a real simple system, and it's an elevator. So if I run this um, without any control, here it is. So I just give a step. This it says it's a ramp, but it's actually the, it's a step into my system. And if I run this, you'll see what it does. And um, and this is System Modeler, um, and that's what it does. Okay, so we got, um, you know, give it a step and it goes, you know, springs back and forth. So if we, uh, I wanna show, of course it lost all my, I spent all this time getting the uh, visuals right. Okay, well, we're almost there. Gotta drag this back in, uh, go out a little bit more. So there's my elevator. And if I run this, um, you'll see what happens. It'll go do that jump and then it goes up and down and up and down. And that's the, that's the motion that, that you saw there. And here's a, the 3D animation of it. I can you know, move that around and look at it from different angles, which is a really nice feature of, um, of System Modeler. And anyway, so, um, so I do that. 
and said, well, that's not very good control, so let's do something better than that. And so what I want to do is I want to design a controller which is going to look like this, okay? So I have a regulator, I have my, my system, I have a, some negative feedback and control it, and then I can put my, my, um, my, my command into it. So let's design it in Mathematica. So next step is grab the model, simulate it, and these are all different properties of things you can do with the model from, from uh, the new version of, of System Modeler. What I'm going to grab is uh, I'm going to grab the equations. So uh, wait a minute, I missed a step. Here we go. I missed something here. Now this is really cool. If I grab this model, if you notice here, there's 1,812 equations in that model because it has all the 3D graphics built into it. So that's a pretty complicated model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify it. So I'm going to run the simplification here. And this thing is running off in, um, this is a cool new feature. Um, so you can see here is 1812 equations. It's applying the simplifications down to 1200 equations. Uh, now it's, it tells you what, what simplification it's applying. It's down to 830. It's down to 700 and something. Uh, and we give it another minute, 760. And it's doing a few more. We can get an idea of the timing on all this. And down to six, okay? So it took 1,812 equations and it took, you know, got rid of aliases, like where you have A equals B and all that stuff and all the sort of non-relevant equations and it boiled it down to six equations. Well now six equations, as opposed to 1,800, I can actually do something with that. So let's go look at it. Oh, we need to do that, um, okay. Okay, so, um, so basically we come back here and we got, um, okay, so here we go. There's our equations. So we got six equations. There's four differential equations and two algebraic equations. So you got your, uh, it got them in Mathematica. We can now do things like look at the operating point and the parameter values. We can go ahead and, and put in the parameters into the equations. We can um, you know, look at where the variables are in the expression. We can look at inputs and outputs. So you have all this equation available. So now let's design something with it. So I, I, so I said, let's linearize it and get a, uh, a state space model. So I, bang, I converts it into a descriptor state space model. So that's what comes out of system modeler essentially directly. So I said, well, how do we use that? So let's roll down here and we turn it into a transfer function. And then what I did is I balanced the model. So uh, we had some, uh, I'm sorry, this is the, um, the unbalanced model. Then we balanced the model. Uh, basically make it uh, a little more friendly in terms of the, uh, like, you know, this is exponents 10 to the minus 7 and, and things like that. So we make it a little more balanced. And then, um, and, and again, this is all posted online, so you can look, go through it more slowly. But uh, so then what we do is let's design a controller for it. So we design a regulator. Uh, first thing we do is we, 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 we create a, um, uh, an integrator. Uh, we add an extra state onto the equation. Then we we hook up an integrator because we want to get some integral feedback, right? Take the error and integrate it and send that back around because that's how you're going to get your uh, control. And so we merge the integrator into the system and it looks like that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I think I'm okay on time, so I'm going to keep going. Um, and then what you, um, you, you wire, wire the feedback together. So it basically, here's our final regulator. So here's the, the LQG regulator designed in Mathematica, and this is the regulator we're going to use. So, you know, using um, you know, all built in Mathematica commands. I want to thank Suba. I don't know if he's here. Yep. Okay. He's here. He helped me out with this uh, as well in terms of, of, of uh, you know, making sure we, we got, it, got it right. And just to show you, we were able to uh, wire um, the so Then we say, okay, let's hook it up and try it out. So we, we wire our regulator to our system, and then we wire our system together in feedback. Okay, we do a system model feedback connect. So we wire it back, and now let's see how we did. So we look at the output response, and here's the original output response, which is that, you know, if you just open loop step it, and then here's the new controlled response. Well, is that really what we get? Let's find out. So next step is we send this back to system modeler. So there, I just sent it back to system modeler. If I open up system modeler right here, and I click on my regulator, what you'll see is all these numbers down here, those came right out of Mathematica, okay? So I made a regulator and I sent it back into System Modeler. So my, my regulator now is all that stuff I designed um, 
in, in Mathematica. So now, how well does it work? So let's go back and run our model. And here's our model. And so I'm going to change this. I'm going to disable this component. And I'm going to enable my step. That's another nice new feature of System Modeler we use. Um, anyway, um, and so let's run this. And we run this. And we look at the response, and there we go. It looks just like we had hoped. You know, actually, it looks very much like the response we got in Mathematica, or predicted in Mathematica. Right? If we scroll down here, that response, a little bit of overshoot, comes right in, and, um, and we get the same response. A little bit of overshoot, comes right in. And if we want to do, uh, be a little nicer, is um, uh, we can go back here, uh, not back here, back here, and give it a, uh, go back to our ramp. Um, and re-enable this component. Okay. Uh, actually, before I run it, let me run, show you just the response of the, uh, the other one, the, um, uh, the animation. Because I think it's kind of... <sighs> okay. Sorry about the scaling here. I should have done this. Um, okay, so here's, you'll notice the step response is going to be a little weird because it's going to do a little jump up in here in this part. See how it, uh, for the step response, that, it sort of did a jump and then, and then that's how it did the step response. Now let's actually do the ramp and you can look at the ramp response and run this again and you'll see now it tracks a ramp and the response is really nice. So there you go. So it looks really good and if I look at the, uh, animation. We can run that. And I had to go find a nice elevator looking thing online to put in my graphic. I got found a 3D model. Very nice. Actually, I first had problems because it had glass walls to it and they, and they, and they imaged dark. So I got like, anyway, so that's, so that shows how that, that works. So now if we jump back, you know, so that, that just, and so the idea of showing this was just to say, hey, look, you can do these designs uh, right there. You know, you can take um, the equations, you can then process them, you can look at, you know, oh, what happens in steady state? We'll set my derivatives to zero. And let's look at what the steady state behavior of the model is. I got the equations. And you really can't do that with other Modelica implementations where you actually can, can draw these models, right, graphically like this, and then say, hey, what are the equations that are underlying that model? Because when you, when you draw them graphically, you lose the equations. When you do them, everyone, you know, most of the time we say, let's start with basic principles and, and start formulating the equations but you lose the ease of using the model, of, of, um, of wiring it together. So now you get the best of both worlds. You can wire it together really easily, and then you can get your equations out, and you can get some insight into what you're doing. So um, let's see. I think we're almost done. Oh, that's it. So we're pretty much done. I, I kept it on uh, right in time. Okay. So um, any questions? That's it. <laughs>